Right now, San Antonio Community Flowers marching on the east side of the Alamo City, commemorating Juneteenth. We're going to have more on the day and what it represents. And as cases continue to rise in Bear County, there's a growing number of places you can get tested for COVID-19 around town. We're going to tell you what you need to know. And I'll have the latest details on your Father's Day forecast and a look ahead to when that Saharan dust arrives in South Texas. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say that a man in his 20s remains in critical condition this morning after being shot twice in the chest. The shooting happening just before 11 last night all in the 4800 block of Castle Sword. That's not too far from Ritterman Road and I-35. Police tell us the victim and his girlfriend were at home when they saw two men trying to break in through the window. The man at home opened the front door. That's when officers say the suspects shot him. Right now, police are still looking for those suspects. And to the latest on the coronavirus, another big increase in COVID-19 cases yesterday here in Bear County. Local leaders reporting 408 new cases, two more deaths in just the last 24 hours. So that brings the total number of cases that we have here in Bear County to 5,550 total cases. Of those 92 people who died right now, there are 267 people being treated at the hospital. Currently, only 24% of staffed hospital beds are available and 78% of ventilators. We have another update coming up later today around 6 o'clock on the number of new cases in Bear County. And amid the spike of cases, major grocery store chains say that they will not disclose infections among staff or make it public. Walmart and Target both telling Case at 12 they will not be releasing a positive employee's store location, date of positive result, or date of that person's last day worked. The stores say that they're doing so to protect personal safety and privacy among its workers. However, San Antonio based grocer HGB has publicly stated when and where its employees tested positive across Texas. And if you need to get tested for COVID-19, Metro Health will have free testing at two separate walk-up sites today and tomorrow. The testing sites located at Burbank High School and Jordan Middle School, they're open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right now, each site can test 175 people every day, but Metro Health says more testing will be available next week. You can also get a free COVID-19 test at the Premium Coliseum, but Remember, that is appointment only, and if you want to make that appointment, all you have to do is call the number on your screen, 210-233-5970. Bear County will be distributing one million masks to local businesses next week. Businesses will receive 100 masks to help follow the county's new executive order. The order announced earlier this week, it requires customers to wear facial coverings while entering a business. The masks will only be available to businesses that pre-register before the event. Online registration is now open at bear.org. The masks will be distributed next Wednesday at the Freeman Coliseum and on Saturday, the 27th, at the Bibliotech South location. Business owners will need to bring their confirmation email. And grim news out of the CDC nationally. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says we could see 145,000 deaths across the country related to COVID-19 right after the 4th of July. And nine states are likely to report more deaths in the next four weeks than the previous four, as others also see increases in cases. ABC's Rena Roy has the story. Arizona is experiencing the highest rate of rising cases in the U.S. according to an internal FEMA memo obtained by ABC News and public health experts are linking the surge to reopening. This casino now shutting down its three locations again amidst concerns about the virus and the governor calling in the National Guard to help with contact tracing. 300 guardsmen being called up to help with this. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom is now requiring face mask wearing across the state. It's one of at least 20 states plus Puerto Rico seeing an increase. Hospitalization numbers are just starting to creep back up uh, and I'm very concerned by what we're seeing. American Airlines also mandating face coverings, kicking this passenger off a of flight Wednesday after he refused to wear one from New York to Dallas. I'm just being told this is the law. I have to get up, but it's not the this law. This is what American follows. If you, if you do not wear a mask, we're going to ask you to come off the aircraft. The airline says he's banned from all of its flights during the coronavirus emergency. This is insane. 
absolutely insane. So it's, we don't even have a choice anymore. People will have a choice at President Trump's first campaign rally amidst the pandemic in Tulsa, Oklahoma tomorrow. His campaign says staff will hand out masks, but not require them. 100,000 are expected to attend in a state that saw a record number of new cases yesterday, though the president falsely claims otherwise. If you look, the numbers are very minuscule compared to what it was. It's dying out. The Bank of Oklahoma Center, where the rally is being held, is now asking for a written plan to practice social distancing, which the Trump campaign has not yet addressed. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And in case you missed it, KSAT launching a new digital news program just this week. It is called KSAT Explains. It'll drop once a week and it offers perspective on stories we bring you throughout our newscasts throughout the day. The first episode focused on recent protests that we've seen across the country and in our city against racism and inequality. Today is Juneteenth, a holiday that communities across the country celebrate every year. It's considered the oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery here in the United States. But as KSAT explains, uh, anchor Myra, Myra Arthur tells us some say that this is also a day marked by sadness. In September 1862, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, an executive order declaring all slaves in the U.S. be freed, effective January 1st, 1863. But it took two and a half years before enslaved people in Texas were told the news. It all started because, unfortunately, the slaves here in Texas did not know that uh, they had been freed. On June 19, 1865, Union soldiers arrived in Galveston to announce the end of the war and to enforce President Lincoln's executive order. The first Juneteenth celebration can be traced back to June 19, one year later. Juneteenth is a period of time in which uh, we come together in order to celebrate African Americans' freedom and independence of freedom. In 1980, Texas became the first state to recognize Juneteenth as an official state holiday. Texas would later be joined by 46 other states and Washington, D.C. And while it's a day of celebration, civil rights experts say it's important to note that the holiday's history is complicated because for so many, liberation took even longer. It was a, a, a day of hope, but was also a day of despair, because even after the, it was announced, uh, slave owners in Texas refused to let people leave the plantation. In some cases, those who said, I'm free now and I'm going to leave, were shot in the back as they were leaving the plantation. Pre freedom was never truly uh, enforced. And again, this is part of the first episode of the digital show that's called KSAT Explains. And if you want to watch more, it is available right now on KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app. And you can watch it on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other smart TV devices. Today, again, is Juneteenth, a day marking the moment that the news came down in Galveston that the Civil War was over and enslaved people were officially free. So what message does Juneteenth have for our nation today? Our Steve Spreeze are sitting down with Dr. Carrie Lattimore, professor of African-American studies at Trinity University. They plan to talk about race relations in the United States and here in the Alamo City and the historical importance of today. You can watch that discussion. It's going to be live starting at 2.30 this afternoon on our website, ksat.com. Well, you might not be able to go to Machu Picchu right now, but you can explore the history of the region. Find out how in today's Flavor Faves. Ooh, so exciting. Also exciting, will we or won't we see football this year? It's a big question up in the air. The country's top leading infectious disease expert says it might not happen. The president actually bouncing back. We're going to have the latest. And as many of us have to socially distance ourselves, it can lead to fewer love connections between two folks. After the break, we're going to see how one local restaurant is adjusting speed dating to fit mm. our lifestyle during the pandemic. Welcome back. It is 12 11 this Friday. For a lot of people, dating life has been non existent the last few months. Dating during a pandemic, for some, it might seem bizarre, but for those longing to make a connection with someone else, they say it is essential. In order to help people connect, a local restaurant in Southtown is actually hosting a socially distanced speed dating event. It's this weekend. Alicia Barrero visited the good kind and has more on what participants can expect. 
Swiping right could lead to a good match, but what about ditching your phone and making a connection in person and at a safe distance? The Good Kind South Town is inviting people to step out of their homes and take a chance at love during their speed dating event, COVID-19 style. They have five minutes. We have two groups, the under 40-ish and the over 40-ish. This is the second speed dating round for The Good Kind, and they say it's been a hit. And we were surprised that it totally sold out. I think people are now more than ever really seeking to be to feel connected and have a community. For those scared of rejection, Tim says you don't have to worry as it'll remain anonymous. At the end, they write down their matches and if the same people pick them, then we send them each the info to be able to go it again. Face masks are optional and tickets are limited. For more information on the event, head to ksat.com. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. There you go. People still need love in the pandemic. Okay, well now you know where to go. But what's the weather going to be like for those outdoor <laughs> tables? That was a beautiful transition. <laughs> yes, that was really good. Uh, warm and humid, but it looks like they've got some shade set up there, so you should be you should be good to go. I don't think rain will be too big of an issue. As we head into the weekend, there'll be some isolated showers and non-severe storms. We've actually got some of those out there this afternoon. And coming up, we'll take a look at radar. That'll be up in just a few minutes. First, I do want to check on the aquifer level. Not cooperating for me, and I'll get you a look at your pollen count right after the break. We'll be right back. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. More and more we keep hearing about the struggles of restaurants here in town and it's why Flavor Faves is back to show you what's still open and still serving great food. This week our Eric Hernandez takes us to Machu Picchu Peruvian Grill right off Mandara Road. For the past year and a half, Machu Picchu Peruvian Grill has wowed customers with their flavorful, authentic dishes like pollo a la brasa and lomo saltado. Neptor Gudiel has been working hard with his staff to keep orders rolling out and serving food that it isn't very common for San Antonio. The most popular is going to be the lomo saltado and a ceviche and make it with a fish, onions, cilantro and cook it with the lime juice. And just like other restaurants here in town, Machu Picchu Peruvian Grill also suffering because of COVID-19. At one point, they almost shut down. It's a, a little tough for us. Uh, I was thinking to close it up the restaurant like three weeks ago. And Neptor goes on to tell us that it was his loyal customers who called and convinced him to stay open. And then the customers started to call us, please don't close, don't close. So I started, I told my wife, let's do it, do it this. Let's see how they're going to survive it. While there has been a small uptick in dining customers, it's still not enough. I don't think I can survive it another month. So I have no, uh, have no business inside. Machu Picchu Peruvian Grill is open Tuesday through Saturday. The hope is that this hidden gym can continue to keep its doors open, serving great food. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I'm in for anything rotisserie. Oh, yeah? It looked good. Yeah, it's lunchtime for sure. All right. All morning long, I was dodging showers. What's the deal? Yeah, uh, and that'll be the case through the weekend as well. So some lucky yards will get some nice rain. Just know if you do get a shower, it's going to move on pretty quickly. And we don't have any severe weather concerns today or through Father's Day weekend. So that is some good news. Just some nice little pop-up downpours over the next few days. I promise you your pollen count here is the very latest today. Mold, pigweed, and grass are all low. So that puts us on a good note here heading into the long weekend. Now, speaking of food, if you're going to either let dad take over the grill this weekend or maybe do a little bit of grilling for him, here's a quick look at the forecast. High temperatures, it's not going to change much from where we are today. Low to mid 90s, plenty of humidity this weekend, 20% chance of rain tomorrow. 30% chance as we get into Sunday. And what I really want you to know about today and this weekend is that if you'll be out and about, if you've got plans outdoors, just know that the best chance to see a shower or non severe storm will be in the afternoon and early evening hours. 30% chance this afternoon, tomorrow morning, 10% chance of a stray shower or sprinkle, 20% chance tomorrow afternoon, a very similar story as we head into Father's Day on Sunday. Look out there, looks like a typical June day for us. 
here. We've got some nice cumulus clouds out there. Temperatures climbing into the low 90s, 91 in Bevo and Gonzales, 86 here in San Antonio. And we've got some nice downpours out there. A bit, uh, a bit more widespread in coverage and heavier rain down to the southeast of San Antonio. But like Ursula was saying, throughout the morning, we have had some small hit or miss showers in and around San Antonio and Bear County. Doesn't look like we have a whole lot at the moment. The uh, more shower activity is off still to the east of the I-35 corridor for now, but we've got some showers that have made it all the way up to Highway 90 and I-10 moving through Seguin. Rain stretches over to Gonzales and Hallettsville. And again, these are just some nice, healthy pop-up downpours. You'll get some heavy rain. I have seen a few uh, lightning strikes show up here on our radar product, so you certainly could hear a rumble of thunder, but again, no concern with any hail or damaging winds for the most part. Just some nice rainfall as these thunder showers continue to pace through and they'll be possible across South Texas through late this afternoon, early this evening. It'll be after sunset when we lose the heat of the day that we'll see the shower activity really start to wind down and we'll head into the overnight hours with mostly cloudy skies. But just like the past couple mornings, a few early morning showers will be possible as we get into the day tomorrow. Heat of the day tomorrow afternoon, more pop up showers, but I think slightly not as good of a chance tomorrow as today to see some rain here in San Antonio. Showers mainly confined well east of 35 tomorrow afternoon, but still an isolated shower, not out of the question as we get into your Saturday. Here's a look at the rest of the day today. We'll see temperatures climb into the low to mid 90s this afternoon. A 30% chance for one of those showers through the early evening hours after sunset. Rain chances drop out of the forecast and for the most part the evening will just be warm and humid. Overnight skies becoming cloudy again. It'll be muggy low temperatures just in the mid 70s. So we will start out your weekend on another kind of overcast, muggy, not the best note tomorrow morning, uh, but then we'll see more sun tomorrow afternoon. 20% chance of a shower there. Don't forget summer officially begins tomorrow afternoon. That's when the summer solstice occurs promptly at 443 PM. So go ahead and set your alarm. I know I will just kind of throw a little confetti maybe at my desk because it's already felt like summer, right? Father's Day on Sunday, 75 in the morning, 93 in the afternoon, 30% chance of an isolated shower or non-severe storm. Tuesday is when we expect that first batch of Saharan dust to roll in, and it looks like it's going to hang around for a little bit. We will take a closer look at that coming up next half hour. Max, Ursula? A little confetti, maybe a little <laughs> spritz of water. Spritz of water. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Well, to be or not to be, that is the question when it comes to the NFL. When it comes to football, depending on who you talk to, you might get a different answer. We're going to discuss next in sports. Welcome back. It is a back and forth dilemma in the sports world, and this quote encapsulates a lot of people's worries. Football may not happen this year. It's definitely not what fans want to hear, but that is exactly what Dr. Anthony Fauci said this past Thursday, warning against the second wave of the coronavirus. But the NFL seems more optimistic. Even some of their players recently testing positive for COVID-19. The league, though, getting ready to play this season as scheduled, planning out a number of safety measures as well, including developing a testing program. But Dr. Fauci said, quote, unless players are essentially in a bubble insulated from the community and they are tested nearly every day, it'll be very hard to see how football is able to be played this fall. Players are due to NFL training camps on July 22nd. The regular season set to kick off September 10th with the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl winners, playing the Houston Texans and Deshaun. So it is important to mention, though, just recently, just about an hour ago, President Donald Trump tweeting out saying in part, quote, Fauci has nothing to do with NFL football. They are planning a very safe and controlled opening. And today, the NCAA expanding its Confederate flag policy. It is prohibiting all of its championship events from being held at states where the flag is flown. Technically, Mississippi is the only state impacted by this policy change. It is the only state that the flag continues to feature the banner of the Confederacy, a blue cross with 13 white stripes. Michael V. Drake, the chair of the board and president of Ohio State University, says, quote, there is no place in college athletics or the world for symbols or acts of discrimination and oppression. And sticking with college, let's go to the Longhorns. 13 UT football players testing positive for COVID-19 or presumed positive. All of this according to the school themselves. That's up from two positive tests just last week. All 13 are self-isolating. The university also says through contact tracing, 10 more athletes currently are self-quarantining and they are asymptomatic as of right now. 
Four football players testing positive for COVID-19 antibodies. Any additional updates will be reported as that information becomes available. And Longhorns, important to mention, they are scheduled to open the 2020 season Saturday, September 5th. At home, taking on South Florida. As of now, the NCAA plans to start the football season on time, releasing an approved timetable accounting for the lack of spring practice among many schools because of this pandemic. But voluntary workouts currently underway. Team workouts can begin on July 13th with a max of eight hours per week. On July 24th, workouts can include walkthroughs and team individual meetings up to 20 hours a week. Then on August 7th, regular preseason practices can begin. So there we go. I also did see this cool little bracelet mechanism that athletes could wear to see if like they have any symptoms or any traces of that. Huh. Yeah, crazy. So we'll see. Only time will tell. Right now, I'm voting for football in a safe capacity. The sports addicts need their football. <laughs> President Donald Trump says he will continue to fight against DACA. It comes one day after the Supreme Court ruled he improperly ended the program. And the legal battle continues between John Bolton and President Donald Trump over the former National Security Advisor's new book. We have the latest. And new today at five, so someone in your house tests positive for COVID-19, keeping them isolated and away from others is key to preventing further spread. So how do you handle their laundry? Marilyn Moritz explains today at five, right after Entertainment Tonight. Developing right now, the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, says the city's police department will fire Brett Hankison, one of the officers, one of the three officers involved in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor back on March 13th. That is according to the Louisville Courier Journal. The department's interim chief says the officer is accused of blindly firing into Taylor's apartment, killing the girl. And we're going to keep you updated on the latest information as it becomes available. And President Donald Trump announcing today that he will renew the administration's efforts to end DACA. It comes one day after the Supreme Court ruled that the president improperly ended the program in 2017. However, many acknowledge the Supreme Court decision is a temporary solution. Essentially, the court ruled it will take an act of Congress to pass a law to either protect an immigrant's right to work in the U.S. or not. President Donald Trump calling on his former national security advisor calling him a wacko after he claimed the president was not fit for office. It is the latest in the legal battle as it continues between John Bolton, his new book, and the president's administration. ABC's Enos De La is in Washington with the latest. President Trump's longest serving national security advisor firing back at his former boss. I think it's uh, unbecoming of the office of president. I think it degrades the political civil discourse in our country and I'm just not going to respond to it. Bolton responding to the president calling him a wacko and labeling his new book a compilation of lies and made up stories. I Administration officials right piling on. It's big lie Bolton. It's book deal Bolton. He's doing it for the money. That's pretty clear. And and uh, my view is it's it's the Washington swamps equivalent of revenge porn. This because of the explosive allegations made by Bolton in his memoir The Room Where It Happened and during an exclusive interview with ABC's Martha Raddatz, which airs in full this Sunday. I don't think he's fit for office. I, I don't think he has the competence to carry out the job. There really isn't any guiding principle uh, that I was able to discern other than uh, what's good for Donald Trump's re-election. Bolton also claiming the president asked China for help with his re-election and sharing his view that Putin believes he can play Trump like a fiddle. House Democrats furious Bolton declined to tell Congress what he knew during the president's impeachment trial. I don't want to make any money for a book that was a substitute for testifying before Congress about the well-being of the American people. The White House is suing to try and block the book's release, arguing it contains classified information. When I wrote the book to begin with, I was very conscious to avoid putting in anything that I thought could be deemed classifiable. The president isn't worried about foreign governments reading this book. He's worried about the American people reading this book. The federal judge in this case has ordered for both parties to appear via video conference at a hearing this afternoon. As of now, the book is scheduled to be released next week. Inez Deliquitera, ABC News, Washington.
The Air Force says its inspector general is now investigating the use of a military plane to monitor recent protest activity in the U.S. Several aircraft have been tracked, both piloted and unpiloted, flying over protests in Washington, Minneapolis and Las Vegas. One was a plane that is typically used by the FBI and National Guard to monitor illegal activity. Government watchdogs fear that these planes were used to track protesters and possibly capture cell phone data. When asked about the flights, the FBI said it had been focused on identifying, investigating and disrupting people who were inciting violence and engaging in criminal activity. Puerto Rico now hoping to be a hot spot for tourists. Once again, its governor announced they're going to be beginning the third phase of economic reopening just this week. That includes reopening the U.S. territory's recreation and tourism industry. The government wants it to be ready to welcome travelers by July 15th. According to the governor, a strict set of health and safety standards will be in place. That way they can better control the spread of the pandemic. The United Kingdom will spend about $1.2 billion on helping students overcome the impact of lost teaching time during the pandemic. A large portion of the funds will be shared across the state primary and secondary schools. And the head of the teachers of those schools will decide how the money is spent. The other portion of the package will go toward a tutoring program targeting disadvantaged young people through the school year. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson releasing a statement on the plan saying, he is determined to do everything he can to get children back to school in September. And Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar removing herself from consideration to be Joe Biden's running mate. So talking to MSNBC, she said the former vice president should pick a woman of color as his vice presidential nominee. Klobuchar went on to cite recent national unrest surrounding police brutality and racial injustice. Klobuchar also says she called Biden on Wednesday, told him a woman of color should be on the ticket. Some of the top contenders Biden could pick for VP California Senator Kamala Harris, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms and Florida Representative Val Demings. Live look outside with live cam on this Friday afternoon. A lot of clouds out there and here and there you might get hit by a shower. A nice little shower. Yeah, maybe even a rumble of thunder and that'll be true over the weekend as well. Rainfall coverage will remain pretty isolated, but if you can get a shower over your backyard, it could give your grass a nice drink of water in and around San Antonio. We really just have a shower there just to the north of Cashville. Otherwise, Bear County is quiet for now, but we have started to see coverage of showers and non severe storms pick up to the southeast of San Antonio and these thunder showers will continue to pace through this afternoon. It is plenty warm out there. 86 at the airport, 89 Port SA, 88 in Stinson. But when you factor in the dew point, makes it feel several degrees warmer than the actual air temperature and we've got some big time heat index readings getting going down on the coastal bend. I'll show you those coming up in just a little bit, but thankfully we have a nice breeze in place. Our sustained winds are generally around 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that breeze does help to keep that hot, humid air moving around just a bit, and we'll keep a nice breeze in place for the rest of the day. 30% chance of a shower or non-severe storm through this afternoon and early this evening. As we get closer and closer to sunset, those rain chances will start to drop off just a bit, but you could catch a shower over the course of Father's Day weekend. We'll talk about that. And I've also got a closer look at our Saharan dust forecast. That'll be along in just a little bit, guys. All right, thank you, Katie. Very little is known about cardiometabolic treatment for diverse Americans. And what makes it even more concerning is that heart disease kills one person every 37 seconds. ABC's Alex Troche has more. Heart disease is the leading cause of death among all Americans, yet women and minorities are seriously underrepresented in treatment research. A new study by the Journal of the American Heart Association found a lack of racial and gender diversity in major clinical trials for new cardiometabolic medications. From 2008 to 2017, women comprised 36% of trial participants, and African Americans accounted for only 4%. The Federal Drug Administration approved 35 new medications during that time span. Someone's race and gender may affect how he or she responds to certain medications. This is important to know when studying a treatment's effectiveness. More is needed to assess the safety and efficacy of medications across these demographic groups. Increased representation can help ensure that medications work and are safe for everyone. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Perche, ABC News. Get up and get moving. A new study suggests too much sitting around could increase your risk of dying from cancer. 
This study was published in JAMA Oncology on Thursday. Researchers followed 8,000 people over a five-year period. They found that the most sedentary participants had an 82% higher risk of dying from cancer as compared to the least sedentary people. That's after adjusting for age, sex, and disease status. Researchers asked participants to wear fitness tracking devices to look at the impact of their exercise. They found that replacing 30 minutes of sitting around with light, intensive activities such as walking reduced the risk of cancer by 8%. Moderate, intensive activities such as biking or brisk walking and social dancing reduced the risk by 31%. Need to go out dancing this weekend. Airlines are working to open more flight paths after the pandemic shut many of them down over the last few months. We're going to learn about the plans for Delta and JetBlue. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech Business Briefing from Cheddar. Delta announcing plans to add to their flight offerings for the summer, but they are expressing caution about the expanding service for after peak season. The air carrier planning to add roughly a thousand flights a day in July and August. However, those flights will be at limited capacity until September. Delta CEO Ed Bastian says that the company will wait to look at demand after Labor Day to decide what to add in terms of domestic flights. Meanwhile, Samsung launching their Galaxy A71 5G in the U.S. today. That makes it the cheapest 5G smartphone in the U.S. The device is priced at just under 600 bucks, undercutting the OnePlus 8 by $100. The phone will be available on networks like Sprint, T-Mobile, and Metro, with an unlocked version expected to arrive sometime soon that will work on other networks like AT&T and Verizon. The phone features a 6.7-inch screen, multiple camera lenses, and an updated charging system. And YouTube announcing a new direct response ad format for shoppers. The new feature is going to make YouTube video ads more shoppable by adding browsable product images underneath the ad to drive traffic directly to the product page. The introduction of the new format comes as the coronavirus has sparked a rise in online shopping. And that's your Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from New York City. And same with business and tech, Twitter coming after President Donald Trump for the third time this month. Thursday night, the social networking site labeled a video that Donald Trump tweeted as quote unquote manipulated media. President Trump's Twitter had an altered 2019 video with a fake CNN banner. In the portion of the video, a black child appears to be running away from a white child, but a few seconds later, Twitter video shows the children hugging without the fake CNN banner. At the end, the video claims quote unquote, America is not the problem, fake news is. Also in your consumer news, JetBlue is expanding service in certain U.S. cities. The air carrier announcing 30 new domestic routes. The company chose these cities because it appears travelers are focusing more on visiting friends and relatives rather than business travel. Service is focused in New York area airports as well as around Florida. JetBlue is also reactivating temporarily parked aircraft to support the new routes. New markets are going to be phased in between July and October. And Google Doodle commemorating the 155th anniversary of the end of slavery in the United States with a video Google Doodle. When you go to Google anytime today, you're going to see a triangle on the picture to click to start playing the video doodle. Now, the short video doodle seeks to educate and inform people who may not previously have known about Juneteenth's historical significance. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. We are just a couple days away from Father's Day. What do you guys have planned? I know. We have Juneteenth today, Father's Day on Sunday. Uh, we better get cracking, right? You're, you're gonna do, doing the barbecue, <laughs> hanging out with... I haven't, yeah, I haven't made plans yet. So, what? yeah, I got to get going. <laughs> what about you, Katie? <laughs> uh, my dads are over in uh, in Houston, so I'm going to see them not this weekend, but in a, in a few weeks. But I guarantee you they'll be probably by the pool. My parents have a pool and they spend a lot of time out there and it'll be a good weekend for it even here in san antonio and south texas so it'll be staying nice hot and humid out there let's check on the aquifer down nearly half a foot in the past 24 hours mold pigweed and grass are all low today we like to see that heading into the weekend but we've got another irritant it won't show up on the allergen list but another big irritant working its way across the atlantic now we're talking about saharan dust that's coming up in your full forecast
Welcome back 1247 this Friday afternoon. If you're hoping to find the Into the Wild bus near Alaska's Stampede Trail, we have some news for you. The Department of Natural Resources, along with the Alaska Army National Guard, using a helicopter to remove that bus this week. The abandoned vehicle became well known after the book and the movie popularized the story of 24 year old Chris McCandless, who died there in 1992 after a 114 day stay. DNR says they decided to remove it because it had become a nuisance and it was on state property. Several people were hurt. Two people even died trying to reach the bus. But as you can see, it is being removed now. Wow, that is crazy. All right, well, back here at home, 86 degrees out there, a lot going on, but it is Father's Day weekend. Is it going to be a good day to hit the barbecue? Oh, yeah, definitely. Just find, just find a little shady spot, maybe somewhere by the pool or something like that. And luckily this weekend, we won't have to worry about that Saharan dust that's on its way here. Not yet. It won't arrive until <laughs> early next week. So don't worry about that. Put that off for, for early next week. But it will get here eventually. The trade winds out in the Atlantic are pushing a very large plume of this Saharan dust across the Atlantic. It's working into the Caribbean really today and this weekend. But taking you to Tuesday, here's Tuesday at 3 p.m. I think we'll start to notice this working into our South Texas air and then maybe catch a bit of a break on Wednesday. But then it does look like there will be a larger plume that moves in behind that. So really, once this gets here on Tuesday, it is going to hang around for several days and not just affect us here in South Texas. Uh, this will also be an issue along several Gulf Coast states. So that is something to keep in mind. We've got several articles about this Saharan dust on case sat.com. I know Ursula yesterday um, uh, talked to a physician about what this means for our, our eyes and our nasal systems and respiratory systems. So a lot of things you can check out on ksat.com to prepare for the arrival of that dust. It will make our South Texas skyline uh, look very hazy when it moves in as well. For now, we're seeing some blue sky along with some fair weather clouds. A few of those clouds have produced rain so far today. 86 with a dew point just shy of 70 degrees. So it is feeling very muggy out there this afternoon. Temperatures climbing into the mid 80s in the hill country. 90 already in Pleasanton. 91 in Catula. 92 in Gonzales. But check out these dew point numbers. They are quite high. They'll come down a few more degrees this afternoon, but for the most part, we're looking at mid to upper 60s, low 70s for our dew points there right on the top of our humidity scale. So continuing to feel very humid out there and keep in mind that when our dew points are high enough like they are today, that's when we start to see our heat index readings really climb up there. So what I've got for you here, your air temperature in white, that's what the thermometer reads, but then the yellow number is the feels like temperature or the heat index and look how big these numbers jump down on the coastal bend. The temperature is 92 in Beeville, but it feels like 107 when you factor in that high dew point in the 70s. Gonzales, 92, feels like 101 here in San Antonio. Our heat index not too far removed from the air temperature. It's just about four degrees higher. So that's why this weekend be a good, good idea to find out a cool spot to stay for the next couple of days. We'll see our afternoon high temperatures not stray much from where they'll be today. Humidity will be staying high, so we could easily see some of these elevated heat index readings each afternoon this weekend. It'll also be nice if you can get one of those isolated showers or non-severe storms in the afternoon because that rain will help to cool things down a little bit and just very briefly. Things are pretty quiet in San Antonio and points off to the north and west for now, but we have had some showers make it all the way to the I-10 and Highway 90 corridors, and a lot of the shower activity right now is focused southeast of San Antonio. But this will all continue to drift off to the north during the afternoon and early evening hours, so certainly not out of the question that we get some of these downpours moving into San Antonio and Bear County later on this afternoon. And what for the most part you'll get with these isolated showers and storms is some brief heavy rain, but we've got a few lightning strikes showing up, so you may hear a few rumbles of thunder, see some lightning. If that happens this weekend, if you hear thunder and you're out by the pool, remember you got to get everyone out because if you it may not be raining where you are, but if you can hear the thunder, uh, you're close enough to be struck by lightning. So please keep that in mind this weekend, but no other severe weather worries to worry about. If you get one of these isolated showers or storms, maybe just some heavy rain and flashes of lightning. No issues with hail or anything like that. For the rest of the day, 92 year high temperature, 30% chance of one of these thunder showers through about sunset. And then our rain chances will drop off for the rest of the evening. Summer solstice tomorrow afternoon. And then of course, Father's Day on Sunday. We get into early next week and then there it is. Tuesday will probably keep that ugly 
dust text on the seven day for maybe another week or so. It looks like it's going to hang around for a bit, unfortunately. Guys. Nasty stuff. Need to keep, be aware of that if you have asthma or COPD in particular. That's right. We'll be right back. It is Freedom Friday, and SA Live is checking in with the SA African American Community Archive and Museum to get a history lesson. Plus, it's Father's Day weekend. Some special things you can do with Dad, or maybe for Dad, and maybe SA Live's Dad will get some love too, right, Mike and Fiona? We have got a little bit of everything, a packed show on this Friday. Oh, yes. We are going to be talking about the history of Juneteenth with the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum. And we're going to be talking with some uh, Freedom Riders, an interview that we did a couple of months ago, and also some library books to talk to your kids about civil rights and what's happening right now. And, of course, Father's Day is happening Sunday. when? <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yes, Just he has been it. counting down, so he's hoping his sons totally remember, which I know they will. So we, of course, are revisiting a special spot for dads today, Broadway news has all kinds of really great dad gifts it's so good we wanted to bring it back yes mm -hmm. and what would dad be without dad jokes sorry we hear but you tell them every day i do not every tell them every day you do everybody laughs, laughs. <laughs> and of course jen munoz has some really creative dad gifts some unique ones too and special surprise for you oh we have a, a surprise? gift for you mm -hmm. we all chipped in for telling all the dad jokes, I get a gift? Or do I tell a dad joke? How do you no, make a Kleenex a dance? That's come. <laughs> hey, this is San Antonio Staycation at a local hotel and at the same time giving back to the San Antonio Food Bank. And of course, the Parade of Homes begins Saturday tomorrow. So if you want to check out some incredible luxury homes, this is where you want to be. Yes, indeed. Plenty of dad jokes coming up.